God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Odell McFarland III, and I'm the senior pastor of God's Hub of All Souls. And listen, we are excited to share another Sunday of God's word to his people. And listen, we're excited about what God has shared to us. We're excited about what God is doing in your lives and what God is doing in the lives of of those not only in our local body, but those who are in the Christian community and how God is moving by his spirit. And uh, we're excited to continue to share uh, another word that will encourage your heart for this week. Amen. As we will be back in our local body on next week. And so we're so thankful for all of you who continue, amen, to come out and press your way. We're looking to have a glorious time on next week. And so I'm encouraging you, tell somebody to come out, amen, and visit and be with us, amen. Even some of our members, amen, who have not visited yet this year, encourage them to come out and hear uh, the word of the Lord. Listen, we're excited. We've got a couple of announcements to share with you. On uh, November 13th, uh, we will be at our own Pastor Timothy Short's church, Oasis of Hope, and uh, we are encouraging you, amen, to be present there, amen, at 1230. I believe the services start as you can see it on the screen, amen. And listen, we are going to go forth in the Holy Spirit. Pastor Short is someone who is from our ministry from 1304. Many of you who have heard 1304 before, that's where, amen, one of the, amen, first locations that God gave our bishop. And so uh, we're excited to begin to share again and reminisce and fellowship uh, with our own Pastor Timothy Short. And on November 12th, uh, we were invited by our own pastors, Rexel and Lavelle Hardy, Amen. They are having a men's day. Listen, I am sponsoring first uh, 10 folks. Amen. We're sponsoring 10 folks who want to come. Amen. To that event on, on Saturday. Amen. So as you can see on your screen, we've got Saturday and then Sunday uh, on November 12th and no November 13th. And so listen, we want to continue to be a blessing to others. Amen. As we know that God has saw fit for us to be blessings to one another. Amen. And blessings to the kingdom of God. So on November 12th, please uh, submit your name uh, to Sister Kim. If you're interested, we will register you. Amen. For that event on the 12th and then on the 13th. Amen. Feel free to come. All are welcome at God's Harbor. That is not a Sunday for us that we normally have service on. It is the second Sunday. Amen. So please, if you want to come and hear the word of the Lord, uh, please do so. Listen, we're going to hop right in and we're going to share uh, a word that God continuously give into our spirit. And that is around the power and the effectiveness of prayer. Amen. And on last week, we talked about how God wants us to put him in remembrance and how when we begin to put him in remembrance, amen, how he will listen to your words because your words are based on what he has said. And we know that God honors his word and he will not let it fall nigh, amen, or death to his ears when we have said or repeated what his word has said. And so today we're going to take that to another level. And I'm going to share with you what God shared with me, particularly as it comes to the power of prayer. Listen, if there is a time to get close to God and if there's a time to understand where we need to be and to march into his kingdom and Hebrews, amen, the fourth chapter, come boldly to the throne of grace. It is now. If you can see the degradation of what is going on and how the stronghold of the enemy is trying to tear our country and divide us apart, not only our country, but he is trying to tear ministries apart and divide the body of Christ. And so we have been ministering this fervency of grace so that you understand the importance of identity. Listen, people of God, if you don't understand identity, if you don't understand who he is and what he has made you, you will have an ineffective prayer life because 
the most fundamental aspect of going to God is knowing who you are and knowing what you should expect because of what he has done for you and who he has made you in his image because of the grace of God. Nothing that we have done, nothing that you have earned have given you that right, but it is because of his grace that he has made you righteous. And the reason why we have been focusing on that grace message or the grace revelation is because with grace, you have identity. Let me say that again. With grace, you have identity. And without identity, amen, it is impossible for you to go boldly and to have, amen, a fearless approach when you go to God. And you see, God is our father. And there is nothing more that pleases him when we go to him as if you would go to your natural parents. And unfortunately, so many of us, because we haven't had relationships, many of us with our fathers, and many of our relationships at home have been tumultuous. We don't understand what it is to be able to go courageously to, our, to a father. But God wants you to understand that your spiritual father is not like your natural father and that he is an understanding God and that he is here. He hears us and he is nigh us. Amen. And that when we call upon him, the Bible says, Jeremiah 33 and 3, call upon him and he will answer you and he will show you great and mighty things. And so when we understand our identity because of his grace, it opens up a whole nother realm of prayer that will give you an effective way to see things that you desire, want, need happen in your life because you understand your identity. And so we're going to take hold of that and we're going to go in scripture. Amen. And I want you to go to 2 Samuel 7, 18 through 20. We're going to read that. 2 Samuel 7, 18 through 20. Listen at this. It says, then went King David in and sat before the Lord and he said, who am I, Lord God? And what is my house that thou has brought me hitherto? Listen, I want you to understand in verse 18, the Bible says that David sat before the Lord. And that is a relationship that he had built through the course of his life that he was able not to run from God, but sit before God. And you see, people of God, I want you to understand that the enemy wants you to always be in fear of the one who created you. He wants you to be in fear to go to God because he knows that if you fear him, there will be, amen, a lack, amen, of relationship. And listen, we should reverence God, amen, but we should go boldly. And when you go boldly, you are not afraid to meet, amen, your father and go before him. And we see that in this example. David sat down before the Lord and he talked to him just like you would talk to your brother, your sister, your father, your mother. And he literally said in verse 18, he says, who am I, O Lord God? And you see, the one thing that I want you to understand is if you don't know who you are, it is impossible to get what God has for you. And here David was pleading with God and saying, hey, Lord, look, who am I? Who, who did you say that I was? And so David understood the lineage. He understood, amen, that he was from the lineages of Abraham. And so he was just reminding God and bringing God to his attention. Hey, look, you didn't bring me here to leave me. And when you understand who you are, you can talk to God as if you're talking to someone who you have a relationship with and you can be real with him and say, hey, look, God, I am righteous. I am your son. I am your daughter. And when you begin to do that, people of God, you will begin to see your prayer life take exploits. You will begin to see your courage and your confidence in him begin to expand. And all of those things that you have been lacking in your life, whether it's financially or whether it's healing or whether it's amen, an advocate for you at work or in your businesses, whatever it is that you are looking to God to do, you can go boldly to him and request that because of your identity, because God knows who you are. 
And so he is wondering, do you know who you are? Hallelujah. And when we understand that, it opens up a whole nother realm of how we interact with God and your prayer life begins to put God in remembrance of what he has told you and what he has promised you. And unfortunately, so many of us, because we don't get into the word of God, because we are on all platforms instead of God's platform, and because we're listening to everything and everybody except the Holy Spirit, we have amen, not been in tune with what is on God's heart. And what is on God's heart is in his word. And when we take time to focus on those things that are in God's word, we will begin to regurgitate back to him what he has promised to us. And when you regurgitate to him what he has promised to you, you will begin to put God on the spot, if you will, because he has to do what he said he would do. Listen, let me say that again. He has to do what he said he must do. And the reason why many of us, unfortunately, have not begun to see the mighty hand of God is for two reasons. One is because we have not truly understood what God has done for us. We have not received, amen, in full faith, the forgiveness of your past, present, and future sins. And because of that, you lack identity and you lack confidence. The second thing is, is that you have not forgiven yourself. Many of you are still beating yourself up for things that you've done. You're condemning yourself because, amen, folks, unfortunately, in the church have condemned you and they have talked about you. But when you understand and have a love of who God made you, when you have a love of what God has done for you, and when you understand who you are and you take pleasure in who you are and you have forgiven yourself for what you've done in your past, what you've said, what you've thought, and you have moved forward instead of backwards, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Listen, the power is in us we just have to know that we have that power, amen, to understand that by his stripes we are healed and begin to pray for that healing, healing of our mind, our body, amen, and our soul. When we begin to pray effectively, amen, knowing who we are, God will begin to respond to his word and he will respond to the righteous. How do I know? Let's go. Let me show you. Genesis 18 23, 25. Genesis 18, 23, 25. Listen at this. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Listen at what he said. Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Verse 24. Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein. Verse 25, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Listen, this is a powerful passage of scripture. This is prayer. This is Abraham going to God and says, look, if we know the story, God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham goes to God and he pleads with them. And so many people think, oh, this is sacrilegious. We can't talk to God like that. That's what prayer is all about. It is not the hikama shama and it is not the eloquence. It is talking just like you would to an individual. That's how you talk to God. And Abraham, who knew who he was, he knew he was righteous, he went before God knowing his identity and said, hey, look, God, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? You see, Abraham understood his place and he understood what he could ask for because he was righteous. He had built this relationship. You see, he had forgiven himself for all the things that he's done. He moved forward and he accepted who he was in God's eyes. Do you accept who you are in God's eyes? Do you understand 
that you are righteous? Do you understand that everything that God has given to you is based on his grace and based on you receiving? So many of us have a hard time receiving forgiveness. We have a hard time forgiving ourselves and we beat ourselves up and the enemy continues to put that on our shoulders, put that burden on our shoulders so that it no longer enables us to be confident to go to God. Listen, I hope you're hearing this today. This is some good word. And the reason why we're ministering this is so that you can have an effective prayer life, so that you can pray for the healing of your own body. You can pray for your community and your family. You can pray for your businesses. You can pray effectively and unleash the very power through prayer from God to do what you need him to do based on what his word says that he would do. And you can do that by knowing your identity, knowing that you are righteous. Listen, this is creating an effective prayer, amen, for you to be able to get what you need from God. Abraham was bold. He understood what his rights were. Do you understand what your rights are? Do you understand not the Bill of Rights that man has created, but do you know your inalienable spiritual rights as a righteous man? And so many of us, unfortunately, we do not understand who we are, and therefore we allow the enemy to do whatever he wants in our life, wreck our finances, our families, wreck everything because we are not laying hold of what promises that God has made to we the righteous. Amen? Forgive yourself. Move on. Receive the forgiveness of Jesus and act like you know who you are and go to God, plead your case. Amen. Sit just like David did before him and have a conversation. Hallelujah. Have a conversation with God about the things that you're going through, about what is happening to your children, about what is going on at your job. When we begin to have more conversations with God than we do on social platforms and gossiping to our neighbors and to the church folk, hallelujah, you will begin to see God do some things miraculous in your life. And that is the sanctification or the dying daily that the apostle Paul said. He says, I die daily. In essence, he's removing himself daily from the things of the world and captivating his spirit to be with God even the more. That's what happens when we pray. When we pray, we leave the natural and we go into the supernatural to be able to unfold all of the wonderful benefits that God has in the spirit for you and for me. My God, I pray that you're getting this word. Amen. Let's go real quick. I want to show you something. Let's go to Genesis 32, 11, and 12. Genesis 32, 11, 12. It says, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother. This is Jacob talking to God about his brother Esau, who is coming after him because of what Jacob did in taking the birthright. In verse 11, he says, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. Verse 12. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Listen at what Jacob just did. Listen, he took the word that God gave his father his father, Abraham, and he put it back to his grandfather, Abraham, and he put it back to God and said, look, thou said it, you said that you would make our seed great, that you would make it like the sands of the sea, that you would make it so that it is multiplied, amen, more than what man understands. And he's saying, you can't do that if I'm dead, hallelujah. So he put God's word Back to him. Listen, people of God, we need to be just like Abraham, just like David, and just like Jacob. We need to put God back into remembrance of what he said and understand who we are and take advantage of our inalienable rights as righteous men, righteous women, 
righteous children, righteous family. When you know that you're righteous, you can go to God and bring back to him what he said and watch him unloose the very blessings and promises in your life. Hallelujah. The last thing I want to let you know before we close, the one other thing that limits us from receiving the blessings of God and from our prayers being effective is unforgiveness. Let me tell you, people of God, you have to learn how to forgive each other. Forgiveness or the lack of limits what God can do. And I'm going to show you through the word. Let's go to Matthew 18. I'm going to show you through the word what God's expectation is for we the believers. Listen, I know it can be hard. I know it's difficult to forgive those who have wronged you. Forgive those, amen, who may have mistreated you. But this is the commandment that God has given us. And it says here in Matthew 18, 21, it says, Then, P then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times, listen, verse 22. And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. 70 times seven. That is God's expectation of what we are to forgive. Amen. Just as we were forgiven, we have to forgive. And listen, when you continuously are in remembrance of what folks have done to you, amen, five years ago, six years ago, and you continue to reiterate that, you have not forgiven. You have still harbored that in your heart, and therefore you have not seen the complete manifestations of God's blessings in your life. And so many of us are ill and are sick, amen, because that unforgiveness has not been, amen, cleansed from our lives. And so many of you, amen, have not forgiven others and you continuously bring it up, amen, and that unforgiveness has limited what God is capable and able to do in your life, not because he hasn't done it, it's because he can't move in the uncleanliness of unforgiveness. People of God, don't get caught with not forgiving, forgiving those who did you wrong, whether it's an ex-husband, an ex-wife, whether it's an ex-member in your church, whether it's an ex-business partner, whether it's, amen, someone that did you wrong on your job, you must forgive. Let me say that again. You must forgive. And listen, I'm not telling you to go around and be abused like a rag doll and let people take advantage of you. But what I am telling you is, is that you need to be conscious that you, amen, who are believers and who have said that you're righteous are holding things in your heart and you are saying things repeatedly what people have said against you or did against you and you continuously repeat it and bring it up. You say, well, I forgave them. Well, if you forgave them, why do you continuously bring it up? Why do you bring up the past? It's because you still have it harboring in your heart and you haven't forgot about it. Listen, the Bible says that he has tossed our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. But yet we still bring up others and others past and we have not forgiven them. And if you want to be set free, set free and able to do effective things in your prayer life, you must forgive. Hallelujah. Listen, my God, we have said so much and we're going to continuously share that continuous word on next week. Listen, we're finished for today, but I encourage you to come out on next week and continually hear what God is capable of doing in your life through prayer. And this is the time. Thanksgiving is right around the corner that we need to be thankful and to give thanks and to honor him and to worship him. But you can't do it without forgiving yourself forgiving others and understanding who you are and unleashing the wrath of God's righteous injustice upon the earth and taking away everything that the enemy has desired to do in your life and destroy the very hand, the work of the enemy because of the blood of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. Listen, bow your heads today. Father, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for how you have forgiven us. We thank you for how now you have allowed us to forgive others.
And Father, we thank you that our prayers are now effective and effectual because of who we know we are and what you've done for us and how we have forgiven others. And God, we thank you for it. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're excited. Amen. About what God is about to do, what he is doing. If you can, press your way. Amen. To the house of the Lord. Amen. And we still need your continuously support, your continuous blessing. Listen, I told you. Amen. We will continue to minister as long as you can to support us. Amen. When the support fades. Amen. We know where your heart is at that point. Is that all right? But as long as we continue to give and to support the ministry, amen, we'll continue to be here, amen, and do what God has asked us to do. Listen, we love you. We thank God for you. Please keep the announcements, amen, that we've given you in mind as we show the ways to give. We thank you so much for your love, for your support, and all of you who have text, call, amen, and who have been a blessing to this ministry. We love you. We thank God for you. Listen. Before we close, I just want you to know that God is love and Jesus is Lord.